what up y'all and um welcome to the channel birdie what's up so in this video i'm going to teach you well not really teach you but kind of show you my step-by-step -step process of how i like to clean my horn in this particular case i'm cleaning my horn in the kitchen sink um text what's what's up so there's a few things that you oh let me actually introduce myself if you're new to the channel my name is aaron on this channel i like uh, I do. I help you learn, practice, and grow as a trumpet player so we can have more fun playing music on this instrument. So what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to clean my horn from start to finish. Um, Nick, what's up? The Joe, what's up? Snapple, what's happening? So there's a few things that you'll need. And let me show you right quick. Of course, you need your horn. So I'm going to be taking this apart and I'm going to show you how I take this apart. Uh, what else you need? You need this uh, valve casing brush. You need this mouthpiece brush if you're going to, you know, clean your mouthpiece. I got both my mouthpieces here. And then you need a snake. Also, some dish soap. Not sponsored. Palm Olive is not sponsored by the channel, by the way. Also, a, a nice big towel. So when you're done washing... And rinsing, you can place your parts on this towel right here. And then um, also I have a sink full of warm water. Not too hot because you don't want that to, you know, warp your trumpet. So you want to have lukewarm water. So if it's too hot to the back of your hand, then it's way too hot. Um, also, I have a towel here. So when I place my parts in, uh, in the sink, I'm not scratching up the you know the surface of my horn so these are all the things that you need your brush your mouthpieces your soap and your horn so let me say hey to a few folks here there's 17 folks in here uh hey i like uh do you guys like quaker oats oatmeal i have that every day for breakfast uh but not sponsored by the channel maybe one day <laughs> but uh let's see here Pickman says, what's up? Nothing much. Here in Chicago, it was so cold. It was negative 35 degrees, I think, on Wednesday or Thursday. It was brutal, man. But it's nice and warm here now, well, as warm as it can be in the winter. It's not negative anything. CJ from the UK, what's up? Call me Frank says, Quaker Oats is the key to a long life. Good. What do you, what do you guys like to eat uh, for breakfast? Or what do you like to put in your oatmeal? Nick says, I never ate that before. Never ate, had oatmeal before? Aaron says, that's too much oatmeal. What are you talking about? I mean, I, I, mean, I guess. I, they say it's healthy for you. Boomst uh, Boomstick says, uh, craisins. He likes to put craisins in his oatmeal. Uh, Pigman says, he likes to have Diet Coke and oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> for breakfast fruit loops actually i just had fruit loops like a couple weeks ago i hadn't had fruit loops in a minute aaron says every day nah i need some variety in my breakfast i mean every day every so often sometimes i cook like pancakes or whatever you know egg sausage bacon stuff like that but um i'm gonna get to it i'm gonna break down break my trumpet down and um, this is a good way to save money. If, if you're the one that likes to, every time you clean your horn, you take it to the shop every time you want to clean, that's going to be a, like tons of money, you know, each, every year. So I, when I started playing, my second year of playing, I, I learned how to clean my, my horn right off the bat. So right now I'm taking off the, taking out the valves. I'm going to take all this stuff off. So feel free to, you know, hang out with me while I go through this entire process. Of course, if you need to leave or go to sleep with you guys, you know, that, that are um, across the water, across the ocean, then please do. But I'm, if you guys want to hang out, ask me questions. I don't care what kind of questions. We can just hang out while I do this. Um, also, you want to take out all of your slides. So I got this nut here so take that off Terrence says what brand of horn is that it's a BNS Challenger 2 I don't know if you can see that it's 
a BNS Challenger 2, um, a 43 bell. You want to take out your second. Take out everything. Even the caps. I actually need to go to the shop to get two of these caps or one of these caps off because it's stuck. So this, this one does not, does not come off. So I need to actually get this professionally cleaned so I can, uh, I can get that off of there. But yeah, so if you have any uh, rubber bands, no, don't use pliers, man. You don't want to mess up your horn. That's how you mess up your horn. Um, like these rubber bands here, you want to take that off as well and place them where you can find them. Because if, if you can't find them, it's going to be hard. Fulton says, just signing on. What's this talk about oatmeal? <laughs> how long you've been playing? Um, how long have you playing? I've, I'm 38 and just started last year. Congrats, man, for starting this year or, or last year. Um, I'm 27. I started when I was 12, so about, what, 15 years? I'll be 28 this year, so about 15, 16 years. Uh, Galloping says, how often do you clean your horn? Do you want the truth or you want <laughs> you want the actual answer? The truth is, I clean my horn. I I, <laughs> I should clean my horn more often, and I usually can't clean my horn anytime it feels backed up, and that's not what you should do. So don't be like me. Don't don't be like me, folks. Clean your horn at least once a month. At least once a month to get all that gunk and stuff, all that all those cheeseburgers and and fries out of your horn. Oh, uh, okay, so now all the horn is is taken apart. All the slides are out. Again, you wanna make sure you take off these rubber bands if you have them. Take them off so you don't lose them. Now, um, for your valves, um, I like to take off this felt here. Especially, it's a cloth felt. So what you wanna do is unscrew this Actually, no. I mean, you can unscrew it if you want, but unscrew this right here. Take this off. This is also cloth, so I'm not gonna wash this. I don't want this to get too wet. I'm gonna take off this, this guide here because it's cloth. I don't want it to get too wet. And then um, I'm gonna put, the, put this finger button back on just like that. You can also too, if you want, take the spring out, just so that doesn't get, you know, all uh, rusted or whatever. If it, if it does get rusted, I don't know. But you can take all this stuff out and, and just screw it back in and leave your valve just like that. So I'm gonna do that for all three valves. I, <laughs> he said, Derek says, I dare you to play your horn like that. So I'm, I'm again, I'm going to unscrew the, 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 val the valve cap, take, take this off, take this felt, this, this felt off, and take the spring out for each one. The comments are going by really fast, y'all. There's 12 folks in here. Uh, XD says, what mouthpieces do you use? I, for right now, since I lost my Bach 3C, I'm, I'm using my Hammond, I guess, 5S. If you guys can see that. And then uh, for, <clears throat> for my lead gigs, I, I play this, um, this Shilky. Uh, it's a John Faddis heavyweight model. I actually don't know the, the specs on it, but... It's um, yeah, it's it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. So th that's the mouthpiece that I use. Ezio, Ezio blazes it. If I wait three hours after I eat to play trumpet, would I need to clean it as as much? Um, 
I would say if, if you're eating, make sure you, like, if you can, brush your teeth or, like, rinse your mouth out with some water before you play. But yeah, there's tons of comments. I won't be able to get to everybody, you know, as I'm cleaning. But yeah. So I'm gonna put this back on here. Just screw it back on. Of course, take this guide out so it so you don't lose it. Put that off to the side. Should do that for my other one too. Yep, that's out. So you make sure you keep up with all your pieces so you don't lose them because they're, they're pretty important. <laughs> so I'm doing it for the third valve now. Again, you can take this, take this spring out, take this guide out, unscrew this cap. And since mine is like felt right here, I, I'm not gonna wash this. I wanna make sure that's nice and dry. So I wanna leave that off to the side, but I'm gonna take this, this is cloth. Actually probably need to get this replaced with a better material because it's, it's, um, it's pretty mashed up from just playing so much. I'm screwing back in. my <laughs> XD said you look you look like a band teacher that hey man um yeah I mean I went to I went to Illinois State with with my bachelor's in music education so I I I've studied to be a band director or band teacher if you will so everything is taken apart so I my horn is is all taken apart all the slides are off all the valves are off uh, you want to make sure you take off your rubber bands and set them off to the side. Let me make this a little bit more presentable so I can, so you can see all the parts that are, that are in this horn. So these rubber bands, you want to take that off. All right. Let's see what we got here. There we go. My mouthpiece here. My slides. What do you got? How many? How often do you guys clean your horns, or how do you like to clean your horn? Cube Studio says I have a trumpet that has a, a two-split valve on the bottom, and I searched all over the internet for one like it, and I can't find it. Any trumpet that looks like it, you know what it is. I actually don't know. A two-split. Oh, spit valve. Okay, spit valves. Um, you can probably, they can probably replace it for you at the, um, at your nearest band or instrument repair. They can probably find the parts for you if they, you know, if they have them in your in the shop, or just um, whatever your horn is. Try to contact the manufacturer and see if they have parts, and and try to order that. Travis says, how often to clean? Now, I was just saying that um, I should clean mine more often, man, because um, <laughs> it will help. Um, but what I said before, once a month. Yep. Call Me Frank says, once a month. Now, get it professionally cleaned once a year. And around here in the States, that's maybe around $100 or so. But here's all, all the pieces taken apart. Here are all the pieces. It's my horn, the the uh, the slides, valves, my other slide, and then all the small pieces. Make sure you have these together. You know, here's my my brush, my mouthpieces. Terrence says, do you perform with a band or solo with the band? What's their name? Um, I'm, I'm a freelancer here in Chicago, so I perform as basically a sub for now. I'm subbing and, and playing like wedding bands and, 
and uh, funk bands here in Chicago. There's this one band called Midnight Sun. Um, I play with them um, pretty, pretty often. Actually, they've been actually keeping me pretty busy on Sunday nights. Um, I perform, I, I play in a church. I'm hired as a musician at a church here in Chicago called New Life, uh, New Life Covenant Southeast with Pastor John Hanna. So we perform gospel music there. Um, so yeah, anyone that needs a trumpet player, I'm down. They, they call me and uh, yeah, that's what I do. I freelance and teach lessons and all that. All right, so I'm gonna put all these pieces. Actually, let me. So you need soap, dish soap. Uh, I say dish soap because it's it's mild. You don't want to use something too too harsh on your horn. So let me put you guys over here. This soap. Boomer says, thank you for making these videos, man. No problem. He says, I'm a sixth grader. I watch you when I want to learn. Excellent, man. So I'm, I'm putting this soap in here. This is all the soap. You don't need too much soap. It doesn't need to be too sudsy. Just enough. Okay, so I'm putting all my parts in here. Make sure you have that towel. That towel in the sink. Putting my valves in here. And um, I'll actually wait to put my trumpet. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean all my parts, all my all my um, my slides first. Oop. There we go. So what are you guys up to, up to this, uh, this season? I know um, I taught a lesson earlier today um, because he was having, um, he's auditioning for colleges. So if, if any of you are auditioning for something or, or preparing uh, a recital, let me know. What are you guys preparing? What are you guys practicing nowadays? Are any of you heading to college? This upcoming year or heading to high school. Aaliyah, Al Alias Gar says, what type of mouthpiece are you using? I'm using a, a Hammond F, uh, a Hammond uh, 5S. That's what it's called. And again, like I, I lost somehow, some way in one of my gigs, I lost my, um, my Bach 3C. So this this mouthpiece that I'm using is, is pretty similar, but there's tons and tons of back pressure. So I, I don't really like it as much. And there's probably tons of back pressure too because I haven't cleaned my horn in a, in a while. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. I use that and then this John, um, this John Faddis uh, model. Um, this heavyweight for my for lead gigs. Let's see. Cube says, got any tips for concerts? What do you mean? Like when you have a concert coming up? I mean, the best tip I can give you is practice as much as you can before the concert. But when you, ha when you have your concert, you want to make sure that you're just in the zone. So whatever's going on, just, just make sure that you know, you're not thinking about, you're just enjoying the music as you're playing. So I'm using this, I'm using my, um, my snake here and I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning my, my main tuning slide. So what you want to do is just give it a nice, a nice scrub and put it through. Put it through. And it should come out just like this. It should be flexible enough to where it comes out on the other side. 
Just want to make sure it's nice and clean. Scrub it. Alfred says I'm going to North Carolina State, A&T University, or Tennessee State in uh, 2021. Excellent, man. Do you know what you're going to audition with? I think someone else said where they were going. Galloping says I'll be the lead trumpet player in high school next year. I'm in three main bands, marching band, symphonic band, jazz, and wind ensemble. Man, you're going to be pretty busy, man. Congrats. I remember when um when I went to high school, you know, I was I, I was in all the bands. And uh marching band was required. And me personally, I didn't really like I still don't like marching band. Like I like to sit down when I when I play. But I'm not I'm not much of a, a marching band guy to to be honest. But you know, I did it. I was actually drum major. I know uh I was drum major uh in high school. You know, I went to drum major camp and all that, man. And let me tell you a secret. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to be drum major so I didn't have to march. Is that bad? Type type in the chat like, which <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down? Is that do I, am I a bad person? You know I wanted to be drum major so I didn't have to march. To be honest, to be honest, to be completely honest with everybody here, that's how bad that's 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 how bad I didn't want to march. And then when I got to college, you know, marching band is required, so you gotta do that whole thing. Um, so yeah. So once you're done cleaning your 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 slides, I'm gonna put this. <laughs> I'm gonna put this over. Uh, who said no? Doesn't make me. Fanny says no. It doesn't make me a bad person. Hey, I want to be you know be able to be a good citizen, a good leader. In, in the marching band. So once you're done, once you're done cleaning, I'm gonna set this off to the side. Actually what I should do, I'm gonna put another towel in the sink, in the other sink because it's a, it's a double sink. And what I'm gonna do is put this in the sink next to it. And so after I'm done washing everything, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rinse everything off once I'm done. And then put it on the on the other towel to let it dry. All right. Any any other comments? I know I missed a lot. Alfred says, do I need to get a a new get a new trumpet mouthpiece? It depends on what, what you're doing. Let's see. Galloping says I like to soak mine in the bathtub with warm water and dish soap. Yeah, that, soaking is is a good idea too. Cube Studio says, so I have a trumpet that has the... All right, I read that already. Nick says, I'm scared I might take all my valves out at once and get them mixed up. You won't get them mixed up because they should have... Um, they'll have a number on them. They'll have a number on them. So your valve should have... If you can see that. Let's see. This should be a, this is a number three for my my third valve. So this lets you know that this is for the third valve. The other ones will have a two, a one, on them. Fernando, what's happening? Nick Hammer says, "How do you tune your trumpet?" That's a good question. Um, you first gotta. Hear 
listen and sing in tune. And the reason why I say that is because as trumpet players, we don't get the, the luxury of a key. We don't, we don't get a luxury of having a key dedicated to each and every note. So most of our notes have to happen in our head first. So I would say, if you want to play in tune, you have to sing in tune or think in tune. So I say sing as much as, as possible. Cube Studio says get a Korg TM50. And that's, the, and that's the other thing, get a tuner. But the tuner is, is, it's a mechanical device. I mean, you really have to learn how to play in tune with your environment. So the band that you're, you're in, the section. So you also too have to learn how to, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to learn how to play in a section. So my first tip, if you wanna learn how to play in tune, you have to sing in tune. So, so any chance you get, sing in tune, sing, and try to match pitch with your voice. And then try to match it with your trumpet. Nick Hammer says, thanks, I gotta go. All right, man, see you later. Thanks for hanging out. So what I did for my, my second, this is the second tuning slide, I guess, but you don't really move it. Again, use the, use the uh, snake and just scrub on the inside. And I like to do this under the water so it just gets all that crud out of there. Galloping rattlesnake. What mouthpieces do you recommend for lead playing or for high notes with a good tone? I recommend a mouthpiece that you feel good about. And I know that doesn't help you, um, but if you can get a good sound with less effort, then that's the mouthpiece for you. Um, me personally, I'm not, I'm not too much of a gearhead, so I can't really tell you exact mouthpieces or, or oh, use this mouthpiece. And, but you just have to try enough mouthpieces to, to kind of get a feel and a sound concept that you want. But get the mouthpiece that will, that will help you uh, play with the least effort. Nyla says, how do you play a B flat, A flat, and D flat? B flat, you play one. A flat, you play two and three. And D flat, D flat, the lower octave is one, two, and three. And up the octave, the, the fourth line, one, one, two, three, fourth line is uh, one and two. That's how you play those notes. Boomer says, I'm not rich enough to buy all those mouthpieces. Uh, you don't have to be rich. That's the good part. You don't have to be rich to, to try out mouthpieces. You can go to um, a music store and try out horns. You can try out mouthpieces while you're there. Yeah. So if there's a, a music shop near you, you can go there and ask to try out horns and try out mouthpieces for free. So that's my tip. So you don't have to buy the mouthpiece first in order to figure out if you like it or not. Clean my other slide here. So you just wanna scrub it just like that. Get all that crud out of there. Of course, put it under the water. Boomer says, you're clearly a good person. Thank you. <laughs> Teaching others. That's my passion, man. I like, te I love teaching. So 
So if you can get it sudsy like this, scrub it out. Austin Rob Robin Robertson says, any advice on what to do when you have a big audition the next day or your chops feel like death? Oh man, that's a great question. Fanny, how often should you uh, do a complete cleaning? At least once every month, you know, on, on your own. And um, you wanna get a professional to clean once, once a year because um, they have um, machines that can really deep clean the horn to get to get all the stuff that you missed. But to answer, who was that? To answer Austin's question about advice on what to do when you have a big audition coming up the next day and your chops feel like death is to rest. Um, the reason for that, unfortunately, you may have practiced or played way too hard the day before. You know, because you're, you know, you're getting ready for the big audition and you wanna make sure you're ready and you're practicing and you're going really hard at it. And so the next day your 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 lips feel like mush and they they're all swollen and stuff like that. I've been there plenty of times. So my advice to that is um not to do that. Not to do that. Try try when you're when you're getting ready for audition at least a week or two before you want to be very comfortable with your your selection your selections and all you want to do in that week or two is to um do playthroughs of your audition so get get people that you that you like and trust that can give you feedback and just play in front of them however if if you did practice a lot the next the, the day before your audition um, I say rest, ice your chops, you know, ice your chops, do as much as you can, um, do a soft warm up the next day. Gallopin says I go on a jog to get the blood to my lips. That's interesting. I never really heard that before. That's cool. You know, run some warm water over your chops you know, to, to relax them, ice them, you know, to get the swelling down. And then the next morning, do, um, do soft, long tones. First, in the, uh, do a, a second line G, and, and then slowly work your way down to the lower register, and then work your way back up to second line G. But very slow, you wanna warm up very slowly. You don't wanna, um, do too much in your warm up before you play your audition. Boomer says, "How do I stop my lips from feeling numb after I use my trumpet?" Uh, take more rest. Rest more in your in your practice session, or and or you know spread out your practice time in your practice session throughout the day so say say if you're practicing for 30 minutes say if you set a time for okay I'm gonna practice for 30 minutes at least half that time you should be resting 15 15 of those minutes you should be practicing just so you're not beating your chops to death because I've been there and I actually have a video about that, about endurance and way and what you can do while you rest. So check that video out if you don't get a chance. Okay, so I'm I'm cleaning my my uh, my slides, oh not my slides, my uh, valves now. What you want to do again with the with the the snake here is is scrub in between these holes, just like that. In between, just like that. And also maybe on the sides, you wanna scrub some of that, that oil off.
Alfred. All right, man. Good night. Thanks for hanging out. So you want to make sure you scrub all in here because there could be crud in these holes here. So you want to make sure that's nice and clean. Your mouthpiece is stuck. Uh, either go to your band director or go to a, um, our instrument repair shop and have them remove it for you. Do not use pliers on your um, on your mouthpiece because you will you will uh, ruin your mouthpiece if you do it that way. So if your mouthpiece is stuck, um, go to your band director or to uh, instrument repair and have them uh, remove it for you. Try not to de DIY it when you're <laughs> trying to take it off because I've been there, I've removed it with pliers and I've ruined a mouthpiece and I've ruined a trumpet, you know, trying to remove it myself with the wrong tools. And uh, you don't want to do that. Someone says, my cornet, I think you say your cornet is really old. 70 plus years. Thalia, my friend has their own mouthpiece stuck for about a year now. It's that bad. Uh, I mean, you 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 want to you want to take that out as much as possible because um, yeah, I, I've actually never had my mouth be stuck for an entire year. So if you actually have a case that <laughs> that supports that, that that's good. But uh, you want to make sure it fits in the case. So if your mouthpiece is stuck and doesn't fit in the case, then that's pretty bad for your horn. I'm cleaning my second valve here. So I was telling someone earlier, they were afraid to take out their valves, but it will tell you, the valve should tell you what uh, the number it is. So on this one, this is the, this is the first valve because it has a number one on it. Gallup says, if you drink more water, do you play better? Um, our body is made up of water. So if you're, if you're nice and hydrated, yeah, you'll feel better. You'll, you'll play better. You'll be hydrated. Um, however, I don't drink water during performances. And for me, because I like to play dry. And when I play, I salivate a lot. And it makes my mouthpiece slip. And I can't play that way. So I like to have I like to play with a dry armature. But if drinking water helps you during your performances, because you some people might get cotton mouth when they when they play. Or a dry mouth. Then drink drink water if that helps you. But it's this whole trumpet thing is just very individual. Now there's just like basic or fundamental things that that we all have to do but we all we all play differently sweaty how long have you been playing trumpet I've been playing trumpet for 15 years I started when I was 12 I started in the sixth grade I was 12 in the sixth grade and I've been playing ever since man So again, I'm cleaning my, my valves here with, with my snake. I'm, I'm going in between. I'm going in these holes here. And I'm just... Got a splash water in my face. <laughs> I'm going in between all the holes here. Getting all the crud out. Of course, I do this under the water. Big dog says can you do a video on how to play 
let's see i'm getting my phone wet uh can, can you do a video on how to play the song i've just come from sydney which song are you talking about fanny says can you talk about trumpet quality will a 200 dollars trumpet play as well as a thousand dollar trumpet now it it all depends and I mean, of course, like you would, you would probably guess like uh, the quality of the horn, uh, the price of the horn determines the quality of the horn, but it's, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to play professionally? Are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate player? All that is in, um, it's kind of some information I need to know because if you're, if you're just playing for fun, then I say just just get a two hundred dollar trumpet and just play for fun. Now, if you're if you're going to college, and say if you're playing on a beginner model, you want to make sure that you upgrade. It, or if you're going to college or whatever, and you have a beginner or intermediate horn, you want to make sure you upgrade if you can to a professional line horn because they're made differently. Um, when I made when I got to college. I was uh, playing a Getson, uh, Eterna 700, uh, Eterna 2 700, and it was a Getson. That was an intermediate horn. Um, it was lighter, it was smaller as far as the build. But once I I, um, I upgraded to a Bach uh, 18037G at the time, and it allowed me to play more efficiently. And that was about, um, a $2,200 horn, but it was made for what I, what I needed to do. So, I'll, so I guess my short answer is it all depends. It all depends on what you want to do with the trumpet. If you're only playing it as a hobby, then I say, get, get the horn. That's, that's affordable to you. Play on a $200 horn. Play on a plastic horn. It really doesn't matter as long as you're playing and having fun. But if you want to get, if you want to be a little bit more serious, go to going to college or going you you going into high school or whatever, um, look into um, a higher quality horn if you can. That's my advice. Hopefully that helped. But also try out horns. Try out different horns and figure out what you like, what you like about it. Um, if you are trying out horns or different mouthpieces, you want to make sure you take your trumpet teacher or someone that plays trumpet so they can um, they can help you, like on your journey. Okay, so I, I cleaned all my valves. All my valves are clean. I want to clean my last slide here. Again, just the scrub. You don't want the water to be too sudsy. Boomer says it's been fun, but I gotta go. Thanks, Boomer, for hanging out. He had great questions. Big Dog says I have a tradition of excellent book. I'm a seventh grader. Uh, it's on line 65 of page 17. Do I have that book? Standard of Excellence. I, th I think I might have that book. But you're asking if I can play that for you or, or kind of demonstrate it. Cube Studios. Wait. Cube Studios says, do you use any warm-up music before you play? If so, what's it called? Um, when I warm up, I actually have a video on, on um, my warm-up routine. So check that out if you haven't had a chance already. But when I warm up, I like to start with long tones. And um, so a few things. Uh, um, the Chickawitz. Da, 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 da. The flow studies. I like to do that as my warm-up. But just long tones, so going from second line G and going down in half steps. Da 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 do da do da do 
keep on going down until you get to the lowest note of F sharp. And then I go right back up um, from the low F sharp uh, back up to the back up to the second line G. Then I go ascending. Da 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 da. And I keep on going up to my highest note. And that's that's my long tone uh, exercise. Then after that, um, I either do some flexibility, or I do some um, some. Uh, that's I guess that's my flexibility, or some lip slurs, um, some finger dexterity. So that could be the Clark two, or that could be a, a certain lick that I'm a jazz lick that I'm learning uh, that week. But yeah, I try to keep it pretty flexible when I warm up. What do you guys like to warm up on? What do you guys uh, do as a warm up? What's the first thing or second thing or what's your process? What's your sequence of warming up? So I'm done washing all my components. Now it's time to wash the trumpet. If I had a better setup, I will actually, you will actually see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So you don't want to bang up to your horn too much. All right, some questions here. Cube says, I do descending half steps. Excellent. Fanny, uh, Fanny Buster says, is playing the Green Hornet theme one of the hardest songs to play? I've heard that theme. That, it, it's, it sounds pretty tough. It sounds similar to um, Flight of the Bumblebee. But I would, I would say, yeah, that's pretty, pretty difficult. I actually have to try that one day. Galloping says, my band teacher found this scales thing for white studies. It's probably the hardest scales I've done. Cube says, I do a B-flat scale in a sheet called corrals. That's cool, too. Uh, working on corrals is a good way to actually start your day and start, you know, um, start with a good sound in mind. He said that warm up. Um, also, Sam Barlow warm up. That's cool. All right, now, so I'm cleaning my trumpet now. Uh, I'm going to use this brush. Kind of put, put soap on it. And I'm just, I'm going to scrub. I'm going to scrub the valve casing just like this. I'm going to put it in. Kind of twist it around. This cap is still in here because it's stuck, so I need to get it taken off. So, I'm going to do this under the water. But I use this brush to clean out the uh, valve casings. Hey doll says, do I need help? So I need help with, I've just come from Sydney, okay. Dahlia says, how do I stop a bandmate from playing an octave higher? <laughs> he tries, keyword tries. Hey man, you, you can't really, can't really stop him. Hopefully the band director um, or whoever's the, the leader if you're the leader, just tell them to stop doing that. And but the band teacher or whoever should should say something if it's not in the music. Fanny says, "Do you have a any personal trumpet heroes or idols you look up to?" Um, let's see. Right now, for a long time, 
you know, I really looked up to, and I still do, uh, Wynn Marsalis, uh, Hokan Hart Hardenberger. He's a classical guy. So is Wynn. But I love their sound. Maurice Andre. I haven't really gotten into Maynard Ferguson. But a lot of people talk about him and I'm not. I like I like certain people's playing. Big Dog says, How old are you? 22? I'm actually 27. About to be, I'll be 28 in September. But thank you. Thank you. I think I look 22. That's awesome. <laughs> it's good that I look younger than I actually am, hopefully. So I'm taking this brush. Taking this brush and um, just inserting it, rotating it as I, I put it in. And um, yeah, just take it out that way. Did I just graduate from college? I graduated from college uh, 2016 at Illinois State University with my bachelor's in music education. I'm certified in Illinois to teach K through 12 band, orchestra, choir. So I have my teacher certification for Illinois. But right now I'm a freelance musician here in Chicago. So I'm not a band director right now. Just wanna focus on playing. And teaching, teaching um, lessons. All right, so for the main tuning slide, Dahlia says, I got to go. It's been fun. Your vids helped me a lot. Thanks and bye. Thanks for, for joining. Thanks for hanging out. Um, so for this main tuning slide and all the other slides, I'm going to use... I'm going to use this snake here and then I'm just going to put it through, put it through the main tuning slides and in all, all which way. Try not to ding up your horn too much. I know you guys can hear all that stuff. Give it a nice scrub to get all that crud out. Yikes, that's nasty. <laughs> like I said, it's been a while since I cleaned my horn, so. Yikes. So don't be like me, folks. Wash your horn if you can every month, once a month. How much practicing is too long? I try to practice two to three hours when I have the time. The thing is um, about practicing, it's not about how long you practice. It's about the quality of practice. If you take someone, if you take two people and say one person is, is gonna have a 30 minute practice session and the other one is gonna have a two to three hour practice session. But that second person that practiced for two hours, practices for two hours, they got their phone on, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram where they practice, they're watching YouTube videos while they practice. YouTube videos that aren't, you know, trumpet related. So if you're watching my <laughs> if you're watching my trumpet videos, that's cool. If you're practicing along with one of my videos. But if if you if, if that person is having just like a very unfocused session, that's a waste of time. That's a a complete waste of time. So you it doesn't really matter 
how long you practice as long it's very focused and goal oriented. So at the end of your session, you feel proud of what you accomplished. Okay, so time, of course, you want to practice as much as you can. But I say, if you're, if you're, if you want to get really good, you want to have, you want to practice longer, but have more focus, have more focus in your practice. Don't let distractions get in your way of your progression. Random X asks, how, what mouthpiece do I use? I use a, um, a John Faddis extra, it's, it's like a, this mouthpiece, it's, it's heavyweight, Shuki, John Faddis model, and I use this um, Hammond FS, uh, I mean 5S. Big Dog 345 says, can you be my trumpet tutor? Of course I can. I, I teach online trump, uh, trumpet lessons through Skype, through a lot of platforms. Go in the description box below if you're interested. And there, there should be a link there for a free trial lesson. So if you're interested in taking lessons with me, um, you can take lessons, with, take your first lesson for free with me. Just click the, the link in the description box below and you can schedule one online. It's really easy to schedule one online. Well, of course, if anyone needs help with trumpet, if you're interested, if you need a teacher, you don't have a teacher yet, and you, you say, "Hey, this guy can help me," this guy meaning me, then um, go ahead and and click the link in the description box below, and schedule a lesson with me, an online lesson with me. If you're here in Chicago, it can be in person. Thirteen, that's fine. Just make sure you contact your folks. Better yet, have them schedule schedule a lesson and um, get in contact with me. My contact information is in that link once you click it. So share share that link with your parents and um, have them have them uh, contact me. Galloping Rattlesnake says, how much per minute, wait, how much is it per minute after the free trial? So after the free trial, uh, my rates for now is a um, dollar per minute. So 30 minutes, I mean, $30 for a 30 minute lesson, 60 for a hour, for an hour lesson. So those are my rates so far. Sure. Um, can you see my comments? Kind of blue. Yes, I can see your, wait, let's see. You have other comments before? These comments kind of fly by. So if I don't, if I don't see it, it kind of disappears. Can I play red clay in C? Not right now, actually. But I mean, probably later. Cube Studios, that's a pretty good deal compared to other people that do private lessons. I mean, just got to keep it fair. And uh, what well, I fair, I mean, that's that's what I offer. That's that's my price for now. But once I get, you know, if my time is is um, if I get pretty busy, then you know that that rate will probably go up. But 
if someone says their their lessons are two hundred dollars or one hundred dollars or a thousand dollars that's what they're worth and if you're serious enough you should take them take them um, up on that offer and hopefully you get value from it can you play the spots this is Despacito in in high F. I could probably play a lot of things, but I don't know. I don't actually know that song. Is that like a pop song or something? The trumpet guy, I think he does he does uh, trumpet covers. So uh, if you want to learn that that type of stuff or those songs, head over to his channel. It's an awesome channel. The trumpet guy, he does covers on on. Um, popular songs but what do you guys think should I do covers on my channel should I do trumpet covers or or teach you guys how to play certain songs if so what what song would you want to learn Grace Hunter says, yeah, that would be cool to do. Yeah, that would be cool if I do um, trumpet covers. What would, what would you uh, all like to hear from me? Like as far as like covers, what kind of songs? So just like pop songs or pop, um, you know, those, those top 40 pop songs or whatever. Any jazz standards you guys want me to play? Michael, did you ever make Allstate? Yeah, I made Allstate my, what was that, my my junior year, 2008, 2009 here in Illinois. Yeah, I made Allstate my junior year. That was a, that was an eye-opening experience. <laughs> as far as like, Hearing, hearing folks play at a very high level and you get really humbled by it because you think that you're practicing that you're, you're practicing and, and you're and you're doing your thing but there's people your own age or even younger playing circles around you so it's a good experience um, I what I recommend is that you if you're if you're quote unquote the best player in your school that's not the place to be. So try to try to find uh, an ensemble outside of your your school, you know, as an extracurricular, and try to play with those folks. Find people, find an ensemble where you're not the best in the room because that's how you really improve. That's how you improve when when you're kind of the weakest link, when you're when everyone around you is better than you. That's how you grow. So that's my recommendation. If you're the best person in the room, that's the wrong room to be in. That's the absolute wrong room to be in. Because the world is a much bigger place than that room. But if there's people still better than you in your school, say, I know someone said they're fourth, fourth chair out of seven, let that inspire you to get better. Don't let that discourage you. Because let me tell you one thing. When I started, when I started playing trumpet in the sixth grade, um, everyone else had started in the fifth grade. But I eventually, with practicing every day and practicing the right things, I was able to be better than them. I was able to play better than, than they, they did because I practiced every day. I did what I was supposed to do, and I, I, I was consistent, you know. So I was able to catch up with, you know, with my studies just by doing what I was supposed to be doing, practicing 15, 30 minutes every single day. 
So it, if you if you're passionate enough about what you're doing, and um, just go for it, go for it. And I was surprised by that myself. You know, by the time b before I left middle school, I was I was first chair in every ensemble. Just be just because I practiced. Not everybody practiced every day. So just by me practicing every day, I was able to get the upper hand. But you know, as you grow, as you um, as you become, you know, as you gain more experience and play at higher levels. It's going to be tougher. It's going to be a more difficult to, um, to I guess, play, play at higher levels. Because everyone is playing, at, playing and practicing at a higher level. So you got to say to yourself, okay, what am I doing that they're not doing? So you got to surround yourself with the right people if you want to grow. And I actually talk about that in another video how to improve as a trumpet player. What am I doing now? I'm cleaning my trumpet in the kitchen sink. And I think I got all the crud out or as much as I could. All right, so you just wanna, it's all clean. So you wanna make sure you rotate it to make sure you get all the, all the water out as much as possible. It has all these suds on it, suds on it and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do now is just rinse it all off. Actually, let me set this down right here. So once you're done, you're going to rinse everything off. Make, make sure you get all the suds out. Again, when you um, when you rinse your horn off, you don't want to you don't want scorching hot water. You just want it lukewarm. So I guess let me show you guys what I'm doing. So this is my, my valve. Let's make sure it's nice. Get all the suds out. Cube Studio says, gotta go. Great video. I've subscribed and liked. Bye. Cube, thanks for joining. Thanks for hanging out. So I'm just now rinsing everything off. Kind of blue because of the waters, it can burn the lacquer off. Yeah, it could, I mean, it could warp your horn. So you don't wanna, you don't want scorching hot water. You don't wanna change the, change the properties of it. So here's my trumpet. Make sure you get You got to be careful when you do this, especially in a in a kitchen sink and it's a double sink like mine, you want to make sure you get all that water in here. in the bell Let's see any other comments that I missed 
Big dog, excellent question. Uh, three, four, five. Why did you name your channel the Black Trumpeter? Not to be racist. That's a great question. The reason why, and I actually haven't explained this in any other video because no one really asked me like in the comments too much. But the reason why I named it the Black Trumpeter is because uh, we we need more black educators in anywhere, everywhere. And I want to provide a great example for and inspire people that look like me to to play the trumpet and to continue playing the trumpet. And I want to show that, you know, show a positive image in my community that that they can follow. You know, they can and there's quality teachers out here, quality male black teachers out here. Now, not to say that my my content is is not for everyone, uh, or it's just for the, for black people, but I just want to provide a great example uh, for for people. It's it's about representation, so that's what I'm about. That's that's why I'm the black trumpeter. Um, and let me tell you a story. Actually, um, what really inspired the name and really inspired you mean me doing this is way back in high school when I played, um, you know, I, I was, you know, for, I was in the top band. I was in the top band. And what happens is the band director takes the top band and tours the middle schools around the area. They tour the middle schools in, in the area and we just play for them. You know, the, we, she takes, the, the concert band and the jazz band, the jazz, uh, both ensembles. And so one day, you know, I was, I was um, coming out of, you know, coming out of school, high school was over. And um, this freshman came up to me, you know, I was a senior. The freshman came up to me and he told me, man, like I played the trumpet because of you. I heard you play and that inspired me to play. And... I was really shocked by that. You know, he was he was a black kid and I don't remember his name, but it really it really I wasn't doing much. I was just doing my part. I was just doing what I love, you know, playing trumpet. And that inspired people and that one person, that one kid to play trumpet. And so from then on, I was like, well, if I can do that just by playing what I love, I can teach and be the same example and and inspire more people to play and continue to play. Because also too, um, you know, as I'm, you know, I'm a professional musician right now and I hear tons and tons of people say like, oh, I used to play the trumpet, you know, when I was in school. Oh, I used to play, uh, I can't play anymore. But I wanted to change that. I wanted to make a way for, for folks to pick up that instrument again and to enjoy it and to never want to quit or never want to put it down. So I wanted to be that example for not only my people, but for anyone that enjoys playing the trumpet. So uh, I guess short answer, you know, the short answer is I want to provide a good representation of, of, of black people, of people that look like me. You know, I want to be that example and set a good example for them so I can inspire more people to play. Okay, so that's my answer. That's, that's why I'm the Black Trumpet. That's why I named the channel that. And yeah. Josh the Boss says, I love your videos. Big Dog says, you look great. Oh, thank you. Um, he said, black people save lives. Justin says, people feel like after a certain age, you can't learn an instrument or get good. Yeah, it's just a loss in confidence. And um, I, I want, uh, for me, I want to make trumpet uh, more accessible to more people. So if that's if I'm inspiring you to either pick up that instrument again, you know, after maybe 20 or 30 years, that's great. If I inspire you to play the instrument, you know, pick up the instrument for the first time, 
that's that's good. But my main goal is to make sure I want I want as many people to play the trumpet as possible because it's a wonderful instrument to play. It's a wonderful instrument to to learn and more people should learn it. So that's that's my answer, man. Justin says I'm 31 and learning. That's excellent, man. That's great. And it's never too late to learn something new. I'm learning new things all the time. So that's my answer. But what I want what I want to make clear is is that um I often get I often get this this response to my channel saying that oh I'm I'm the one being racist because I I call myself the black trumpeter and what if what if I call myself the white trumpeter and I get I get those those comments uh here and there not often but when I do I say to them what's the reasoning behind behind it your reasoning for you saying that you're the white trumpeter and me saying I'm the black trumpeter are two different things, right? So there's a re there's a deeper meaning to what to why I name myself this. What what is you, what are you trying to come across as if you if you name your channel that or if you deem yourself that? Right? So that's all I got to say about that. Josh the Ball says, I just started playing for my second year. And if I ever need to figure out something, your videos always help, man. I appreciate that. And and those comments, man, those those your comment and every everyone's comment that, you know, that says they love my videos and I help them, that is what inspires me to keep going and keep doing these videos, right? So um I appreciate you all. I love you all for that. So thank you. Fanny says, in the Bible, Gabriel blew his horn and the walls came tumbling down. So God must love the trumpet. Hey, it's in the Bible. It's a, it's a royal, it's a majestic instrument. I think Went Marcellus said somewhere in some interview. But yeah, uh, Big Dog three four five. Can I be a mod in your streams? Sure, just uh, visit my streams more if you if you're if you're available. When I stream, then then yeah. Let's see. Plasmistic says I started this year in sixth grade. I'm going to be the top band. I'm going to be in the top band in seventh. Obviously, in middle school, unless I don't understand that music sometimes goes slow and not super fast all the time. <laughs> I'm not really sure what you mean by that. But you say you're going to be in the top band in seventh grade? That's excellent. Good job, man. Good, good work. Now, continue to put in that work um, to make sure you secure your position. Ken says, do you know Yamaha Japan 14 B4 GP mouthpiece? Um, feel good when I play the mouthpiece. Hey, if, if, if it's a mouthpiece that you feel good on and you sound your best and you play, um, you play efficiently, that's the mouthpiece for you. And that's kind of my simplified answer to that because I'm not, as I said before, I'm not really uh, much of a gearhead as far as you like knowing specific specs and all that so all right so let me finish let me finish uh rinsing out this horn so you just want to make sure the water is not too hot Get in all the crevices to, to get all the suds out as much as possible.
You want to rotate the horn to make sure you get all the water out. As much water as you can. Because what I'm going to do next, and you guys won't be here for that. Um, I'm going to let this, let this stand overnight. So it can dry overnight. And then tomorrow, I'm going to oil it up. Oil it up and um, put slide grease on it and everything. And it should be ready to go. Ready to be played tomorrow. Kind of blue. What do you think of Monet trumpets and Monet mouthpieces? I've never tried a Monet mouthpieces. I've not tried a Monet mouthpiece or trumpet. I'm really interested in it uh, just to see how they play. Um, of course, they are, from what I've heard, they're expenses, expensive as ever. So I don't know if in my lifetime if I'll ever <laughs> be able to, to afford one. But but yeah, I don't I don't know. I won't be able to tell you. I've never played one. Marvin Pierce says you're doing your thing, Black Trumpeter. Love it. That's what I was looking for. Excellent, man. Grace says I used to play the piano, but I had a severe muscle in in injury, and haven't been able to play again. I get sad. And I miss my instrument, but really inspired. Inspires me seeing people that still enjoy it like you. Man, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that, Grace. But I, I'm glad I'm able to, to give you some type of joy through, through, what I, through what I do. All right, so... Uh, I'm done cleaning my horn. That that's it. This is uh, of course it doesn't look all shiny. It doesn't look all shiny and new yet. Tomorrow I'm gonna buff it all out. And make it look shiny. I'm gonna oil it up tomorrow. This water looks disgusting. <laughs> But, but yeah, that's, in a nutshell, that's how you clean your horn, step by step. If you guys really like this, I, I really enjoy you guys. Thanks for hanging out. It's 14 folks in here. So if you could like the video, that will help my channel a ton. Um, so people like you that enjoy my content, they can, they'll be able to see it. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up here. If, if any of you have any more questions, put them in the chat. If you're if you're watching this on a replay, post your question. If you have any questions about you know cleaning the horn or anything about trumpet, just let me know. But that's it for this live stream. If you're new, I guess it's a little bit late for that. If you're new <laughs> at 83 minutes and you're still watching this, thank you for watching. Um, my name is Aaron. I do these these live streams here and there. Uh, I'll be back with more content, more videos pretty soon, right? Uh, so please stay, um, keep with me. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell. So whenever I get a chance to upload, you're the first people to know when I upload a new video. Um, but the next few videos is going to be about fundamentals. Uh, it's going to be about improvisation and some tips. So, um, but the thing is, my computer, my Mac just died on me. So I need to get um, get a new battery for my laptop. So there's going to be a halt on my videos until I get that fixed because my computer is dead, like dead, dead. So I'm going to get that fixed hopefully tomorrow. And... Uh, and yeah, Fanny says, good night, sweet prince. Good night. 
Uh, Plasmistic says, love the stream so much. Definitely coming back for the next one. Fanny says, maybe a fan. Oh, maybe a fan on the horn will uh, will help it dry. I don't need to. I, I mean, uh, it's cool for it to. A fan will probably make it dry faster, of course. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just let it sit overnight. And then it's it's pretty bone dry by the time I wake up in the morning. But yeah, folks, that's that's it for this live stream. Thanks for ch hanging out. Thanks for chilling with me, asking some great questions. And I'll see you in the next video. You guys take care and be blessed, all right?